Hello. Hey, hope everybody's doing well. So glad to be with you. Welcome to Covenant Community Fellowship. We are a kingdom-focused ministry where families come first. So glad that you're able to be here with us uh, for this Tuesday night study in God's word. Wow. A provo I look, I know it is a provoking title and I know it's going to be a challenge for some people. It's going to be a challenge for me. If you have been waiting on your destiny, if God has spoken to you, it's been prophesied over to you over and over again, that there is something in you that God wants to bring forth right? But yet it has not manifested yet. Then the question becomes, how many more prophets does he have to send? How many more angels does he have to send? What has God got to do in order for you to allow him to bring forth what is in you? Wow. So this is a, a really good message. So good to see you. So good to see you. Glad that you are here bringing on a couple of other platforms so glad that you are here. And so um, it's going to be a special, special time. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it with you. And I think that you are going to be provoked beyond measure. If you are born again, if God has saved you, if God has delivered you from the stronghold of sin in your life, then it is for a reason. And not just because he doesn't want you to be a slave in Egypt. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. In fact, the children of Israel, when they were in Israel, uh, when Moses went to them, uh, Moses didn't say to Pharaoh, let them go so that they don't have to be slaves. He said, no, release them that they might go three days hence and worship God. Mother Rice, good day, good day. So good to see you. So we're going we've got a wonderful message, right? And that message is for you, it is for us, it is for this time. I am ready to bring forth what God has put in me. Man, let me say that again. I am ready to bring forth what God has put in me. And this is a great message when you've been pregnant for too long. And so very excited about it. I'm praying that God will open up the eyes of your understanding for whoever this is. If you are at that place and God has impregnated you with a vision of the destiny that he has for you, it needs to come forth. It needs to move. What's happening on the inside has to be delivered into the world on the outside, right? And it's time to come forth. Uh, some, of, some of you are at that place where you are just saying, I know God has told me something uh, that he wants me to do with my life. He's confirmed it in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And so I'm ready to come forth with it. Well, if that is you, I believe that God has a message for you tonight. If it has been affirmed, it has been prophesied, it has been, it has been anointed with virgin oil, with all kind of oil, and you are just wet all over with oil, and, and everybody knows it, and you know it, and you are still pregnant, then it is that time for what is in you to come forth so that it can grow beyond you and take on a life of its own without you. When God gives you a vision, you give it right back to him. When God impregnates you with his word and a destiny, then you birth that destiny and you give it right back to him so that he can give it the increase. So got a good word. If you would, uh, turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 1. Verses 26 through 38, Luke chapter 1, verses 36 through 38. Oh God, let your Holy Spirit open the eyes of our understanding that we might see what you are saying. Father, there are those that are afraid. There are some that have turned and walked away from their nine to five. They have walked away in the pursuit of others' dreams to follow yours. 
God, I pray that that they would allow you to complete what you have started in them. In Jesus' name, let your Holy Spirit speak through me and illuminate your words. Amen. If you have it, let me put it up on the screen for you. And this is St. Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament, right? So it's the third gospel, right? And chapter one, verse 26 through 38. It says that in the sixth month, and I'm, and I'm reading the King James, the 21st century King James Version, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee near Nazareth to a virgin that was espoused, engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And, and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast about in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Because here you have this 10, 15 foot angel standing here, Gabriel, what a force. And he says in verse 31, behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, in regards to his kingdom, it will have no end. Then said Mary unto, angel, unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, Holy, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. And therefore, also, that holy being whom shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. And behold, your cousin Elizabeth, who is 80, 90 years old, she hath conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. I want to stop right there. With God, nothing shall be impossible, for with God, nothing shall be impossible, right? Verse 38, when she heard it, this is what she said. And Mary said, behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her once she said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it happen to me as you have said. Then the angel left. Mary had uh, had uh, 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 attained a position before the angel to where he could see by her posture and see within her eyes that she, when she said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your words. And when you receive the prophetic word of God, then there's no need for the prophet to keep prophesying. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Some of us have lived our life and we've always been a helper. We've always helped somebody out. We, you know, we were, we were a young girl, a young guy, boy, between before childbearing age. Although we had 
the raw capacity, we did not have the maturity to reproduce anything. I want to say that it's interesting that God did not come to Mary, although he had selected her, until she had the ability to reproduce. It's interesting that when God gives you a vision of what he wants to do with your life, it is because God has already discerned that you have developed enough, whether you are aware of it or not, you have, you have gone through enough changes, your body has gone through enough changes, your life has gone through enough changes, that you are now prepared to walk in something that you weren't prepared for a year ago. See, time makes a difference and we look for these huge leaps, but sometimes it's the little increments that makes the difference. 211 degrees of a water pot on the stove and it's bubbling. 212 degrees and it's boiling. It's, it's when the change happens, it's a subtle change that's been, you've been moving up to. And at the time when God is ready to use you, it's just a slight change of degree. Yesterday you were bubbling, but today you are boiling. In other words, you have, you have moved into the ready position. You are ready to conceive. In other words, God is not going to allow you to conceive a child until he knows that everything that is within you has matured enough to carry, to bear the weight of uh, bearing this child, that you have matured enough so that you can carry it to full term. God is not going to impregnate you with a vision that he has not already seen that you have the capacity to bring it to full term. Let me say this again. Some of you have been told, it's been prophesied, you have agreed, Lord, behold your hand servant, behold your servant, here am I, so be it unto me as you have said right? And we have spoken that. But some of you, people have prophesied to you for the last 10 years. Where are we? In 2012, they told you, you're anointed for this, or you're anointed for that. In 2013, you're anointed for this, you're anointed for that. In 2014, in 2015, in 2016, in 2017, in 2018, in 2019, the prophet has come over and over and over again. And you have said, Lord, so be it unto me. And so you have received the seed of, from God of your destiny, but you hadn't started any prenatal vitamins. Or you haven't moved further in your pregnancy but you will have the ability to say, I am pregnant, but this thing is not growing inside of you, what you've been impregnated with, and it's not, and therefore it is not growing you. It is impossible when you are pregnant for what you are pregnant with to grow and then you not grow. Now, there are these stages, and everybody's not in the same stage, but there are some people that will not allow to grow what God has impregnated them with. In other words, they have a reason for staying where they are for whatever it is. But then there are others that will allow it to grow and allow it to grow, and they go into the first trimester, they go into the second trimester, they enter into the third trimester. But what happens is their spiritual body never gets to the point of where they began to dilate. So that the passageway to the world, the opening to the world does not dilate in order to let the baby come forth. I thought that this was interesting that God chose the Virgin Mary. 
that he sent one of his greatest prophets to prophesy. But when he sends an angel, he not only sends the angel to prophesy what's going to have, he's, he sends the angel to declare what God desires to do and is doing in and through you. And he says to her in verse 28, you are truly blessed. The Lord is with you. Hell, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee and you are blessed and blessed art thou among women. You've been set apart and this is the place of agreement when we began to agree with God. God has says that you are the man to lead this movement, not because you are the best, not because you are the brightest, not because you are the most educated, not because you are the most connected, but you are positioned to lead this because God has had a plan for you before you were in your mother's womb. God knew you. And when you were in your mother's womb, God anointed you. God had a plan for your life, a plan for good and not for evil, to prosper you to an expected end. And it doesn't matter how much time has gone by. When God sends forth his seed, when he sends forth his word, it shall accomplish that which it was sent to do. Now, Mary, verse 29, she was confused by the angel's words and wondered what they meant. Then the angel said to her, verse 30, don't be afraid. God is pleased with you and you will have a son and his name will be Jesus. Right? And, and so God, when he makes the decision to use you, then the preparation for that time may be different than it is for everyone else that is going up for a promotion on your job. Everyone else that is ahead of you in the pastoral line at the church. That there is an acceleration when God is doing it. And so here you are going to law school, but you just graduated from high school. How can that be? Oh, it can be. And it happens when there is a supernatural move of God upon your life, you don't have to go through man's pecking order. In verse 34, Mary said, how can this happen to me? I am not even married. I am still, since I am a virgin, how will this be? Seeing that I have not known or been intimate with a man. In other words, everybody knows that there is a pecking order before I, I come up for this position. There are some prerequisites that have to happen. But in a universe in which God controls, the only prerequisite needed for God to bring something through you and into this world is God saying, let it be, it shall be. It doesn't make any sense. And when you, and if you try to reason what God is doing in the spirit against human protocols, you got to go to first through 12th grade, and then you got to go to college, and then you got to take the LSAT, law school admission test, and then you got to get accepted into a law school. That's a whole nother process. And here you are just graduating high school and, and God has said, you're going to be going to Cumberland School of Law and this and this is what's going to happen to you. It's normal to say, how can this be? Verse 35, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come down to you and God's power will come all over you. So your child will be called the Holy Son of God. What God has impregnated you with will be of God and God will cover what he births through you. How will God birth it through, through you? By his Holy Spirit. Now that's a pretty powerful thing. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. 
you will be in, endowed with power from up on high. And the power of the highest, the most high God, shall overshadow you. Therefore, also, that holy being who shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. In other words, God has determined that he is going to reproduce something through you. This is a very powerful time. Somewhere along the way, sometimes we get stuck. Something happens in our life that we don't expect. Maybe before we look around, life flashes by, passes by in a flash. And when you look up, it's time to retire from your job. And it's as if they are saying, we no longer have need of thee. When you look up, it's time for your last child to leave home and you're an empty nester. And you wonder, where is my life gone? When you look up, you've got more life behind you than you do ahead of you as you are moving towards the place of transition for your life, when you look up, somewhere you didn't take the road going to your destiny. Somewhere as you pass down, Siri said, do a U-turn and go back on this road, but you ignored it for one reason or another. And oftentimes many of us have a good reason for not going forth with God. But God says that there is no good reason. If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62. Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62. Right? And and look, and I always use the online uh, uh, Bible because you know how I like having three translations up there. And we can read all three over and over again. I want, so I've got King James Version. And then I've got Contemporary English Version. And then I have the English Standard, which is my all-time favorite, right? Because I think that it's not just my favorite or preference. I think it's closer to uh, the original translation uh, or what's happening in the Greek. Verse 57, reading ESV to the far right. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus had been doing miracles. And so this, this, uh, uh, this Pharisee comes and says, look, I've seen the miracles. I'm seeing what you're doing. Based upon the miracles, I'm going to, I want to follow you. Wherever you go, I'm in. Anywhere I am in. The and as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee where whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus turns to him, and this is strange, so we have to read it slow. And he says to him, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man doesn't have a place to call his own. The son of man has nowhere to lay his head. This is an interesting saying right here. And then another says to him, and, and, and to another, Jesus says, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Verse 61, yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is a tough saying. Verse 59, contemporary, Jesus told someone else to come with him. But the man said, Lord, let me wait until I bury my father. But first, Jesus answered him, let the dead take care of the dead. 
while you go and tell about God's kingdom. Then someone said to Jesus, I want to follow you. I want you to know God. I want to follow you. I want to do your will. I want you to use me. I know I am anointed. I know I am appointed. But, hmm, but, First, let me go back and take care of things at home. Jesus answered, anyone who starts plowing and keeps looking back isn't worth a thing to God's kingdom. Now, that's a tough word. First, you have the man with an uninformed zeal. Jesus is the latest thing that is happening within the territory. Uh, folks are getting healed everywhere. And this man is amazed by the works that Christ is doing. He says, look, I want to be a part of that. You, you blowing up out here. Nobody is doing it like you're doing it. I love it. You got good stuff, Jesus. I want to be a part of it. I want to be on your team. And Jesus said to him, you looking for a place. And God is looking for a follower. You're looking for a position and God is looking for somebody that will say, I will go wherever you tell me to go. There are many people that are just merely looking for a slot, a spot, a pulpit uh, to become renowned, to make their name great. They're looking for a place. And then he says this, foxes have holes. Now, you got to think about in the culture when he says foxes have holes. Foxes are somewhat devilish, right? They move with sleight of hand. That's why they say they call it a sly fox. They make good moves. Uh, they slit. They kind of ease in and slither. Anytime you see a fox moving, you kind of see him kind of easing in down while everybody looking over that way. He kind of goes in the shadows and doesn't want to be seen, right? He He's looking to make the right moves. But the way in which he's going about it is, is a little, is a little um, what do you call it, subversive, a little undercover. So he says, foxes have holes. And then he says this, birds of the air have nests. And the early church father believes when he's talking about the birds of the air have nests, he's talking about these princes of the air who want fame and fortune, who want to be renowned and well-known, who want to blow up, right? And so he's talking about that. He said, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. It doesn't mean that he doesn't have a bed, he doesn't have a place to sleep, but he doesn't have a spot. He doesn't have a dwa, a designated work area, a place that he's going to show up to work. Because why? When he wakes up, he's available to the most high God. Whatever I need to be, Father, I never grow too high to serve in any manner that you want. If it's to be a great preacher, then God, I'm willing to serve as a great preacher. And if tomorrow it is to wash the toilet, then I will be the greatest preacher ever that is washing the toilet. In other words, God, I'm willing to be anything and everything that you want me to be. When the moment comes for you to walk in your destiny, to bring forth that child, when the water breaks, you got to bring it forth. You got to bring it forth. What God has placed in you. And so there are some people that have been pregnant too long. You've been carrying this thing too long. You've been waiting on the right moment. You've been waiting on the right time. You know, I'm going to do this when I make enough money so that I'll, I can save it and then I can preach. See, what you just said, although it sounds spiritual, is 
when I make enough money so that I don't have to depend on God to take care of me, then I'm going to do it. To the person that's decided that this is the route they're going to take where they don't have to trust God, they're going to say to you, that's wisdom, isn't it? And, I, and, and, and I'm going to say to them, if God told you to go, that's not wisdom waiting to do what you think is best. It's rebellion because you said no to God. Someone else will come to him. And, and, and Jesus said, come with me. And that man said to him, Lord, let me wait until I bury my, my daddy. I want to do it, but I have a good reason for not doing it now. He said, let the dead bury the dead while you go tell about God's kingdom. I put something in you, a word, a message in you that others are need and needing and other people's destiny is tied to your assignment but there's a but in your way. Then someone said to Jesus, I want to follow you, God. I want to sell all out. I want to be in ministry full time. I want to do this. But first, let me go back and take care of things at home. If God has asked you to do anything for him, then he has the ability to take care of that which pertains to you. And Jesus answered him, anyone who starts plowing and keeps looking back is not fit for the kingdom of God. You can never go forward and embrace your destiny by reaching towards your past. The events and things, when you, when you get ready to move into the birthing position, when you have been pregnant with an idea too long, pregnant with a business too long, pre pregnant with a ministry too long, when you've been, when you started to carry this thing to full term, it's time to bring it forth. And there are some people that are saying, he, well, he, well, the baby's not a grown man yet, so I'm not ready to bring it forth. If you don't allow that child to go big, to grow bigger than you and beyond you, it will kill you. And there are some people that are in so much pain, so much duress and stress because they are trying to contain something that God has impregnated them with, that has a kingdom destiny and a kingdom assignment that is destined to grow far greater than what they can contain within themselves. In fact, giving birth is a way of giving it back to God. God will never ask you to do anything that doesn't require you to trust him, to rely upon him. We must do the right thing the right way, with the right attitude, with the right heart, taking on the ministry of reconciliation a man to God and men and women to one another. That is the ministry that Christ has called us to. Well, my life's about over. What'd you say? Well, my life's about over now. So you say your life's not over yet. 
No, no, no. I said it's almost over now. Right. You said that your life is not over yet. And life is for living. And the book of Proverbs says that a, a live dog is better than a dead lion. Because where there's life, there's hope. If you can form a word in your mouth or a coherent sentence, and God has allowed you to stay on this earth, let me say this, the Lord hath need of thee. The Lord desires to be able to withdraw that which he has impregnated you with. And if it is the word of God, then it's time for you to deliver what God has put in you. It was never God's goal to make fat cats. We're, we're so full on the word of God that we're leaning back like Big Daddy or Big Mama, and we got all this word in us. We may have this treasure in earthen vessels, but it's in us that we might be a witness of him. It's in us that we might tell of the goodness of the Lord while we are yet in the land of the living. It is in us that we would go and tell about God's kingdom. If you are filled with the word of God, then you are impregnated with something that will bring life beyond you. But it can't have increase if it stays in you. Well, you know, I want to start a ministry and I feel like God is calling me to start a ministry. What kind of ministry? Well, I believe that God wants me, you know, to feed the hungry. I tell you what, what you waiting on? Well, see, I got to get my 501c3. No, 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 you don't even need it yet. What you need is the heart to serve, to go forward and do it. Well, I believe God has called me to preach. Well, preach. Well, you know, I, uh, my pastor said, Whoa, 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 if God called you to preach, how come you're not preaching? Oh, you want a pulpit. I got it. You want to stand in front of some folks so that they can see you in the position of the preacher. You got lost family members in your house. You got lost family members that are related to you. You got lost folks on the job. You got lost people at the supermarket. You got lost, lost people in the parking lot. You got lost people at, at the ball game. You got lost people everywhere that need to hear about God's kingdom and you waiting on a pulpit. My, my, my. You've got to make a decision whether you want to be popular or powerful for God. Others have to make a decision. Either you are available to God or you are not. And if you are available, then be about it. Be everything that he has called you to be. To some he gave five. To one he gave five. To one he gave three. To one he gave one talent. He didn't give you that talent to decrease. He wants to turn the addition, when he added the one to you, he gave it to you to multiply. How are you going to multiply the talent that God has given you? Just like I said the other day, when the church split God turned division into multiplication. When God gives you a gift, when he adds a gift into you, he wants to turn that gift into multiplication and not subtraction. God wants a ROI, return on his investment from your gifts, talents, and abilities. Well, I'm waiting on the church. I'm waiting to audition at the church in order, you know, because, you know, I feel like I'm anointed and called for praise and worship. Then go volunteer somewhere and sing praise and worship. Well, I need to get permission from my pastor. I got it. Did your pastor call you? No. Well, who called you? God. What did God say? To go and tell people about God's kingdom through song. 
what stops you from doing what God has told you to do? I'm telling you that we can no longer wait. There is never a good reason for waiting. Birth that child and let him grow. He can't go from an infant to a toddler in your womb, let alone a grown man. And you're not just having babies, you're building generational families, which is going to require more of you. It's gonna require a commitment. Your sleep schedule's about to change. Your bank account's about to change. It doesn't have to, but we're not washing no dirty diapers and pinning them up. So now you're going to go get them pampers and you'd rather spend your last on pampers than to wash diapers with your hand. I got it. But it's going to cost you something to bring this forth. And the question is, are you willing to trust God enough as you birth the vision that he's put inside of you? Well, you see, I'm pregnant. If I wasn't serious about it, I wouldn't have got pregnant. Now you're pregnant because gifts come without repentance. God has chosen you. But what he's what he's sensing is he's sensing the the he he's sensing the the reticence on your part to let it come forth because you're going to have to trust God like never before. And for some of you, you've been pregnant too long. You waiting to deliver a cute toddler and go ahead and have the little um, comely baby come on out and let that baby live. Let the baby get some sunlight. Let the baby breathe some air. Let the baby stretch out. Let the baby exercise its voice although it can't talk yet, it can be heard. And as you care for it and nurture it and feed it and clean it and, and do all those things with the baby that God is, has birthed through you, it will become an, into what God has already predestined it, predestined it to become like. Look. Sometimes you got to just walk in it. You can't wait to have your first opportunity to walk in it. You can't wait to become a New York Times bestseller before you sell a book. Just do it. Get your hair cut. Get your shave on. Get your clothes right. Shine that watch up. Put you some cufflinks on. Where you going? Well, I'm going to work. I thought you work at the steel plant. I do, but I'm practicing for where I'm going. I've got my work clothes in the back. And if I got to change when I get there, I'm willing to change, but I've got to practice where I'm going before I get there. So that I'm not trying to learn how to level up and to measure up. I've got to build my wardrobe. I've got to get used to walking in this so that when people walk by me and they look at me, they say, wait a minute, what is that silver dollar doing in there with all those pennies? It doesn't belong there. Let's get it to its proper place. But sometimes people can't get you to your proper place because you're not dressing the part. Sometimes when you are playing the role of a penny, people can't see the silver dollar that you were meant to be. I'm telling you that in the land of promotion, that promotion doesn't come after you get hired to do another job. You demonstrate that you are able to operate on that level, they see that in you, and then they promote you to that level. 
that people, they put people in positions because they have a degree, but a penny with a degree will never perform like a silver dollar. Because you are tall and muscular or you have a, a, a bottleneck figure, but a bottle, a penny with a bottleneck figure will never have the same value as a silver dollar. God will take somebody not with a Coca-Cola bottle shape, but with a Coca-Cola can shape and have you on the cover of Sports Illustrated if you will begin to walk in that part, if you will begin to operate in faith as if God said what he meant and meant what he said, as if God has already put all of the provision and resources you need ahead of you on that path. It's like Pac-Man, you just fall on the path and eating the dots. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage us. We're in June. Began to walk at that next level now. If God has called you to sing something, then go to nursing homes and lead praise and worship. Go to the jail and lead praise and worship. Go somewhere and use your gifts. Get good at it. Sing to the five with the same passion you would sing to the 5,000. And somebody walking by will wonder, what is that silver dollar doing in those jar of penny? What is your name? Practice like you've already got the part. Don't try to perfect it on the inside of you, it has to be perfected beyond you in the presence of God. You can't grow a baby the full term. And that baby will stay in a state of protracted infancy while you waiting on three pastors to die before you get the pulpit waiting on three women to die before you get the vice president role. You got to start operating at that next level. And I hear people say all the time, I'm not going to let them make no fool out of me. I'm not going to wear no good clothes up here. Well, act like a penny and get a penny reward. Don't get mad when somebody else comes in there and they address, they dress to the nines. They're looking like they're ready for business. They're looking like they're ready to represent my company and they get the promotion and they get the hire because they're already operating at the next level. Who am I going to put in that position? Somebody that is already operating at that next level or somebody that is really cool and they're really, really good at this level, but I don't know really what they'll do at the next level because they don't have the faith to walk it out. They don't want to let anybody make a fool of them. They don't want to demonstrate that I can do that work, my work, and more work. So that by the time I get the promotion, it is because I've already proved that I can operate at the next level while I was at this level. I'm talking to so many people tonight. So here's what I want to say. Our time has come to an end. Some of us have plays, books, novels in us that we've been pregnant with for too long. Some of us have organizations, nonprofits, for-profits, clubs that are in us. And all you have to do is show up. If you show up, you are ahead of 85% of the people in the world if you just show up. If you show up and you're on time, you will be ahead of 90% of the people. If you show up on time with a plan, 
you will be ahead of 95% of the people in the free world. And if you show up on time with a plan and you implement it, then you will see and experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Why don't you start your encouragement ministry tomorrow? Tomorrow, call up five people and, and bless them. Speak a blessing over their life, a word of encouragement, no sneak dissing. No talking about that. I see you got a nice new little car. You know, I like your little car. I like your little house. I like your little new outfit, you know, <laughs> none of that stuff right there. That's wickedness with a smile. Become an encourager of the most high God. That's a ministry that is open to all of us. And I'm going to call with a word of encouragement. That when I see a certain behavior, I'm going to call and say, I'm proud of you. When I see that you are trying and you're not yet there, I'm going to acknowledge your effort. I see you're trying. Now let's go on across the finish line. You are so close. God's going to do amazing things through you. Man. Could you imagine being a part of a church, a part of a family? Where everybody in that family is seeking to encourage one another, be a blessing to one another. What would it be like to get a card from your mother or your father? Just saying, I love you and I'm proud of you. Keep becoming that woman that God is making you into. Move closer to God. get a letter from a brother or sister or just a text message, words of encouragement. We have the ability to change the quality of life for people in the service of God. But all too often, we want to be popular instead of powerful. If you could sing, then sing. If you can pray, then pray. Call people and pray with them or bless them or read to them. There's so much ministry that we can do and we are waiting. And part of that is our desire to be more popular than it is powerful. But then we have another group that's not bringing forth, that's not, that's, that's not bearing that fruit to carrying that fruit to maturity. Maturity doesn't mean that it's perfection within in itself. It means that this stage right here, I've run my race, I've completed my course. Here we go, it's ready for the world. Some you've been pregnant way too long. You are swollen. You are unhappy. You are guilt-ridden and shame-ridden. Get it out. Get it out. Dress the part. Talk the part. Package the material like it has value. Right? Right? And then allow others to partake in that value through purchasing a quality product. Not some faded copies. If you want God to promote you to that next level, then mature to the place, be in position so God can take you to that next level. It's my prayer tonight that that thing that you that has been prophesied over you that you have agreed to that God has sent time and time again and you know that this is your destiny 
than the season in which God says, follow me, preach my word, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel, teaching them to observe what I taught you, making disciples, and I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. I hope tonight made sense for you. I've got some thinking to do. I've got a book. It's not on that shelf. That is on the inside of me. That needs to be on that shelf. I've got to birth that book. And I got to put it on that shelf. And in the near future, I'm going to come in one of these settings, and I'm going to go get that book off the shelf, and we're going to change lives with it as we read it. I've been pregnant too long. I got to bring forth what God has put in me. I've got gifts and talents that have been dormant for too long. I must bring forth what God has put in me. My faith tells me, my faith in God reassures me that with God, all things are possible. My faith in God says that if I follow the path that he has laid out, every divine connection, every divine relationship, every resource needed, every dollar needed, every open door needed, every connection, all of that is alongside of that path because God has placed it there that I might have good success. But I must demonstrate that I believe that that is true. I must demonstrate that by beginning the journey. It's time to begin that journey. Loose that vision and let it come forth. Loose that destiny and let it go forth. And you, you and I will never be the same again. Father, this is my prayer tonight, Lord God. That Father, those that have been laboring for too long in labor, I pray, oh God, that the dilation would happen. That the space would be created in their presence to bring forth that which is in them. I pray, oh God, that the eyes of their understanding, wittiness of invention would come forth. And Father, I pray, oh God, that it would operate and come forth, Lord God, at the level of excellence. Because nobody counts the cost until they count, until they question the value. No one questions the cost until they question the value. Oh God, I pray that superior products will come from people. Workbooks and training books and, 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 uh, and nonfiction books and fiction books would come forth, Lord God. Training guides will come forth, Lord God. Workshops and seminars will come forth, Lord God. Music, Lord God, opportunities will come forth, oh God. Ministering opportunities will come forth, oh God. Father, that it would be unleashed in this season like a dam, Lord God. Father, not just as a congregational church move, but as a big C church move, Lord God, that your people would begin to allow the gifts that are in them to flow freely. That God, that each would put their gifts into circulation. Father, I pray for that brother, sister that is on the sound of my voice. Oh God, Father, let this be that day. Let it be that day. August 9th, 2022, let it be that day that will live on in infamy in their lives. But when they decided to trust you, to 
to have faith in God, to rest upon God, to rely upon God, and to look unto God, who is the author and the finisher of their faith. Father, I pray for good success. I pray, O oh God, that each one would know the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Father, break every chain that is holding them. Dispel every lie that is saying, not yet. For this reason or that way. But Father, let their hearts agree with you that now is the time for it to come forth. And Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. I hope that the, I hope it was provoking for you, right? It's provoking for me. And um, I'm praying that this would be your hour. Uh, yes, your season. Yes, your time. But the hour for this to come forth, what God has put in you to come forth, birth it. And when you birth it, Make sure that you put the clothes on it that are fit for the king, the queen in waiting that's come from you. If the value is there, the people won't question the cost. And if the value is there, the Holy Spirit will ignite it. And it will be like a suddenly it goes forth. There's nothing more powerful than a godly idea whose time has come. Look, we love you. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. Covenant Community Fellowship. We love you guys. You take care. God bless. Bye.